Yeah, but if I know there's a lot of people out there that don't want to hear, uh, they don't want to hear the gospel message. They don't want to hear you know, somebody preaching from the Bible. But um, in light of everything that's been going on these days, um, I just kind of wanted to share something real quick. If you don't want to listen, don't. You know, you're more than welcome not to. It's your, it's your, ob it's your option. Um, exercise that option if you choose. Um, but this comes out of the book of 1 John. It's uh, chapter 4. I started in verse 12. It says, No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, hmm, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. You know, in light of like everything that I was talking about, in light of everything that we keep seeing on the media and everything that keep, keeps getting posted on Facebook and, and all around, um, I understand the travesty that, that, that has occurred. But I also understand this. And, and the word right there just said, the perfect love cast out fear. You know, we have a fear of so many things. We have a fear of the police. We have a fear of, of success. We have a fear of, of failure. We have a fear of marriage. We have a fear of parenting. We have fears of new jobs. We have fears of even believing that this word of God is truth and that God is really real and that Jesus is really real. So all I want to do is express one thing to you. As much as I've said this before in previous past and in my YouTube bathroom preaching videos, God loves you. And Jesus Christ gave his life so that we could have forgiveness of sins, so we wouldn't have to walk in fear because perfect love casts out fear. You know, Paul told Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I don't see a lot of power being exhibited these days through people who call themselves believers or Christians, i.e. I don't see a lot of that any, 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 anymore. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'm just going off my own personal observation and even my own life. I'll put myself in the front in the front of that line. I'm, I'm not walking in the power of God the way the way that Jesus said that we're to. When he said, these things that I've done, you would do also. When he said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. When he gave sight to the blind, he said that I could do that too. In his word, he gave those promises. So the one thing that I do have is this. I do have love. And perfect love casts out fear. And love allows you, love is patient, love is kind, love endures, love sees the best in everybody. And love encourages, love gives of itself for the benefit of somebody else. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down. That was a, an act of love. Now, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind, being able to think consciously and be able to think realistic about the choices that you make. You know, we are so quick to point the finger at everybody else, but we don't want to point it at ourselves. We want to point the finger on the police officers. We want to point our fingers on the, on the inner cities. We want to point a finger at the government. We want to point a finger at the church. Everybody wants to point a finger, but nobody is willing to point the finger at themselves. You know, we always hear the scripture, judge not lest you be judged. But Jesus also said something. He said, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye when you have a plank in your own? First, remove the plank from your eyes so that you will be able to see clearly how to remove the speck from your brother's eye. All I'm trying to say is this. We need to start being introspective. We need to start looking at our own lives, taking responsibility for our own lives. And instead of sitting here like I heard a girl of mine tonight, a girl of mine today said something. Do something. Just do something. Quit talking about it. Just do something. If you, if, you, if you hate the way the inner city is going, then you walk down there and you hang out on the corners with them, brothers, and you give them an option. If you hate the way these women are prostituting themselves, then you go down there, you buy them some clothes, and take them off the streets and help them. See, we're so quick to point the finger, but nobody wants to do the action. Paul said, you know what? That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. You show me your works by your faith, but I'll show you my faith by my works. Because faith, faith without works is dead. So all of these people complaining, 
myself included, why don't we all take the advice of the Gospels, take the advice of Christ, take the advice of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, take the advice of good-hearted people that are trying to do something in the cities, trying to do something in our country, trying to do something in the world. And why don't we do something? And that something is this. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to all that believes. I'm telling you this. If Facebook is an outlet that God has given me at this moment, then I'm going to tell you. God loves you. Jesus gave his life for you. If you repent, if you say, forgive me, I change my life. And I'm asking you to give me a new life. It happens. I'm living testimony of that. One of the biggest drug heads, promiscuous people, just foul, unfaithful to every woman I had ever been with, but God, but God, but Jesus. Look, man, let's do something. Let's do something. Let's turn the game around. We've been down way too long. And if you are calling yourself a believer and a Christian, you should be in the front line. And I should be right there with you. One love. God bless you.